Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 206, where we're going to look at the top 10 cards for Origins. Now, this list is being put together a week before the pre-release. I haven't gotten a chance to shuffle any of these cards yet. So if you have opinions that differ with mine, put your own list in the comments and we'll compare them after a week or two of play with these cards. I'm not going over reprints. Yes, I'm super excited about Goblin Pile Driver, one of the best cards in the set. We already know which reprints are good and which reprints are bad. Yes, there are a few reprints that are not good. The rest of the video is going to be positive. I've got some great stuff coming up here. These are my honorable mentions. Uh, sort of a Mist is really interesting. The ability to ramp with this sword is going to be really popular in EDH. I like it a lot. I'm going to pick up foils right away. Will it see standard play? It really depends on how fast the environment is or if there's a way to combo it in some way with creatures that really need that plus one plus one maybe in a mirror match or something but i think its home is really going to be edh um, awakening here is another really strong edh card a fun little bit slow but really powerful ramp spell over the long term arch angel of ties now if it wasn't for the three white this would have easily made the list she's kind of stuck in monocolor decks at this point another fun edh EDH card may see a little bit of standard play depending on how strong white is, but the three white in the casting cost is really tough. I've also seen a lot of people talk about using her as an anti splinter twin card, just isn't possible because she has to be untapped. They can just tap her as the last one with their pester might coming out and then attack in with the army. Chandra almost made the list. I had to cut somewhere. I think Chandra's a little bit slow also. She does have a good ability. I think she's going to be a casual favorite. The last card here that doesn't make my top 10 list is Demonic Pact. I'm super happy they printed this card. It's got great Liliana artwork on it. It has three modes everybody likes and one mode everyone is scared of. But this is the type of fun card that comes out of community development. Even if the card ends up not being playable, I'm just glad that Wizards gave players the voice to come up with such a cool and interesting enchantment. And maybe in a black control deck with some big finishers, this could be part of it, or maybe even a suicide black. It looks like a lot of fun. I look forward to playing this card, and I look forward to seeing it in foil. The number 10 spot here, I've got Days Undoing. This is the top of some other people's list. It is Time Twister Redone. Now, Time Twister is one of the original Power 9 cards up there with Mox's Time Walk and Ancestral Recall, Black Lotus, as the most famous magic cards out there. Time Twister, though, is the weakest of the three blue power nine cards it gives your opponent seven cards and in this case it gives your opponent seven cards and it ends the turn i do think there are some fringe cases in which this could be a lot of fun but in things like robots would i rather play days undoing or would i rather play thought cast which is going to get me two cards for two less mana i like this a lot in edh i don't think it's got a home in standard or in modern if it does, though, it's likely also to get banned pretty quickly. If it really enables either a combo deck or a deck like Robots that is extremely good already to go over the top, I would watch out for it to hit the ban list. I like that they're doing these cards that flash back to the past, and I think this one is actually really well balanced. Whenever you say draw three or draw seven, there's a chance it could be crazy. We all remember Treasure Cruise, and some of us even remember Time Spiral. Time Spiral was a broken Time Twister reprint also. My number nine spot here, I've got Abbot of the Carol Keep. This is a card that has been getting some popularity recently. It started out at about a dollar or so and is up to uh, two to three dollars in pre-orders. I know that I make mistakes occasionally when looking for the next red snapcaster mage and i'm hoping that this is closer to it i know that it is not as amazing as snapcaster but it does fit red really well it could do a significant amount of damage especially if you've got free spells or you need to hit your land drop and i like the card advantage that this really brings about 
And in your worst case scenario, you whiff on the card and you've got a 2-1 that has prowess, which for a lot of aggro decks is very good in and of itself. Number eight spot here, I couldn't decide which of the elf cards I really wanted to highlight, so I did them both. Sylvan Messenger is extremely good. This is the Goblin Ringleader for elves, and if elves is all about value, then this is a card that we'll see it play in a lot of different formats. But if you're looking for a combo win, Shaman of the Pack is a way to get through a significant amount of damage. Both of these cards are really nice. I think they're both going to see some modern play and may even be the center of an Elves deck in standard. Number seven spot here, I've got Magmatic Insight. This was Mox Boarding House Card Kingdom spoiler this year. And a lot of people here in the Northwest are talking about this card as playable in either lands or maybe even in decks like Delver, where you don't need land later. You've got an abundance of land. This could turn into actual value. I don't care that it's a sorcery. I'd be so much happier if it was an instant. The number six spot here, once again, I've got two cards. The most important of those to me is Languish. It's a really a board wipe or really close to a board wipe that combos very well with Erebos' Titan. You get a very strong creature and a way to kill everything else on the board. You have a really nice combination. Erebos' Titan, the ability for it to come back again and again, especially after you cast a board wipe, gives you a really strong finisher in a control deck for standard also. The number five spot here, I've got the new Gideon. Boy, has Savannah Lion come a long way. Savannah Lion was your 2-1 vanilla white creature from Alpha and Beta. Now you've got Gideon as a 2-1 white creature before flipping that can become indestructible. It's a little bit tough to activate his flip. You gotta get more creatures out there and attack with them. So I don't think he'll see play in Legacy, but he could very well see play in Modern, and I'm sure he'll see play in Standard. This is my favorite of the Planeswalkers, personally. There is another Planeswalker or two that have uh, scored higher on this particular list, but I really like this guy, and I'm picking up a few once the price kind of settles down a little bit. He started out really high on the pre-order for some reason, and I think he's going to come down to about that $15 range, and that's when I'll be picking him up. Jace he is very popular amongst control players. Pretty much every Jace has found some way to make it into a deck, no matter how bad the Jace is. This is a Midland Jace. I'm very unimpressed with the 0-2. If it was a 2-1, I would be super happy with him. I mean, wizards are supposed to be like 2-1s or 3-1s, right? Look at Ventilion Click, Dark Confidant, Snapcaster Mage. Uh, not so happy with Jace there. But when you flip Jace, he's got five loyalty, which is a lot of loyalty. And it's not going to be that tough to flip him, given his ability. Once you flip him, he has the ability to defend himself, and he has an emblem that whenever you cast a spell, target opponent mills five cards from his or her library into his graveyard. So it's not an instant win condition, but it is a way to eventually win the game, which is all a control player really needs, is to control the current board and eventually win the game. The number three spot here, I've got Tragic Arrogance. This is going to be my new favorite EDH card, and I sure hope it finds a home in Standard. It is based off of the original Magic card balance. Now, it doesn't hit lands, but it hits everything else, and it allows you as the caster to choose which single permanent amongst each of their different types of permanents they keep. So if they're a really heavy creature deck, you give them their worst creature. If they're a really heavy enchantment deck, you give them the one enchantment that doesn't matter. The utility to hit those unbalanced decks that have a lot of one particular area is what is so appealing about this card to me. I like this as a potential control card. I also like it with cards like Myth Realized so that you can take advantage of having one enchantment out, one planeswalker, one creature, one artifact. Find cards that really work together well and have one of each of those on the board. So it's really a one-sided board wipe when this comes about. The number two spot here, once again, I've got two. There's two really interesting red cards that I haven't covered yet. Exquisite Firecraft being one of those. 
four damage is a lot of damage in a burn deck, and the spell mastery ability makes it relevant in older formats. If there are two or more instants or sorceries in the graveyard, exquisite firecraft cannot be countered by spells or abilities. I can see this being important in modern. Four damage is a lot for burn, and burn is already doing really well. Molten Vortex may even have a life in either a life from the loam deck or in some type of a legacy deck where it can slide in early and do a lot of damage over time. Both of these cards I'm going to be looking for foil versions, especially if they look impressive in foil, and I'm going to be brewing with them in older formats and watching how they do in standard. Standard is really going to determine the price on these. So the Vortex itself may end up being really low, where Exquisite Firecraft may be very high if an aggro or burn deck is using this as the top of the curve. Nissa has made it to number one here. A lot of people that I respect in deck building have been talking about and brewing with Nissa already. Nissa has made it into the number one spot for me, mostly based on the fact that I'm picking her up to put into my green EDH deck, and she will be a wonderful addition in that deck. Given the large amount of ramp in EDH, she will flip very quickly and be a potential win condition, along with card advantage with things like Oracle of Diva. I like her a lot. I believe that she is also going to be very viable in a ramp strategy if that is what the new Eldrazi set in the fall brings about. Having a nice ramp card and green is likely to be in whatever ramp strategy we see. This is a well-designed planeswalker with an ultimate that pretty much ends the game. Please pile drive that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers. Thank you everybody who's over there supporting the channel on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. I've got a really big announcement coming up this weekend.